Hello, I'm the Sorceress for SorceRecipes.tv and today I'm starting on a long series of classic French sauces. Today I'm going to be showing you how to make a classic bechamel sauce, which is a white sauce of the kind you have in lasagna. And then I'm going to show you in different videos some of the amazing variations you can do with it. So this is a sauce that's probably the most important one to learn to do. If you can make this, you can make a whole range of other sauces, not just white sauces, but the techniques are very similar with other classic French sauces. So here we go. I have a saucer I've just put on the fire. I'm just going to let that heat up a bit while I make my onion pique. This is an onion, which I have a bay leaf. This is a fresh one, but you can use a, a dried one. And these are two whole cloves. You can see the little bud. And I'm just going to stick the cloves in like so. This is called an onion pique, and its aim is just to give a little bit of a lift to the flavour of the sauce. Not to make it terribly oniony, but to just make it make it uh, you know a little bit uh, more subtle so here I have some butter about two tablespoons I might just not use all of that right now and two tablespoons of flour I'm going to melt the butter and I am making a roux that's spelled R-O-U-X now the roux is the fundamental of a lot of these sauces. It is uh, something that is used as uh, the base for brown sauces, um, white sauces. It's even the basis for choux pastry as in profiteroles or eclairs and for souffles. So it's a very useful technique to be able to have. Now this is a white sauce so I'm making a white roux which I'm doing by adding the same quantity of butter. I'm adding the, the quantity of butter, I'm adding the same quantity of flour. So just plain flour. And uh, I'm mixing that up. And that is going to cook for a minute or two. I want to make sure that the flour is completely cooked because there is nothing worse than a um, a floury taste in your beautiful sauce. So we're just going to cook that out. As you see it's foaming up. I might actually have a little bit too much butter there but uh, I don't think it's going to matter once it, this, the, uh, the roux is cooked. So that's probably right. Now I have here ha about one half litre or one pint or about two cups of milk and it's cold milk. There is a school of thought that says add uh, hot milk, but I use cold milk and I just add it a little bit at a time. And you can see what happens. It, uh, it gets absorbed into the roux very, very quickly. But the important thing is to add it just a bit at a time because otherwise it's going to uh, form into lumps and you don't want that. So I'm just adding gradually and mixing in as I go. Important to get right into the corners of your saucepan. I'm not holding this very well so it I want to give that a, a bit more of a stir. It's important too to beat it out a bit so that the lumps don't form. Now I can add a little bit more. As you see it's starting to form a nice thick liquid. The amount of milk you add is largely governed by the thickness of the sauce you want. If you want a thick sauce to go in a lasagna, for example, uh, you would add less milk or less liquid. If you want a thin sauce to become uh, a foundation for something else, you or even the basis of a soup, you would add more liquid. And the uh, if you were going to use it as a souffle base, 
or a base for choux pastry, you would add relatively little liquid to the amount of flour. The flour absorbs about uh, six times its own weight when it's cooked and that's why it's important to have the proportions right. Now I'm just going to mix that up. As you see it's perfectly smooth, there's no lumps in that. And now I'm going to add the onion pique and just let it infuse in the, in the saucepan. So the flavour of the onion, the bay leaf, <laughs> and the get in there uh, and the cloves are just going to subtly flavor that I'm not seasoning it just yet because I'm going to let that simmer on the stove for about 20 minutes and uh, when that's done we'll resume and I'll show you what's happening then right well this has now been simmering for about 20 minutes and I've been stirring it a fair bit of the time uh, as you see the quantity has reduced a bit I'll just take out the onion. It's come apart a bit, but that's all right. The beauty of using the whole spices and the whole onion is that you don't get little bits of things mixed up. You see, I've still got the cloves and the bay leaf, and uh, that's going to be fine. But it's got a beautiful consistency now. As you see, it's parting the... You can see the bottom of the saucepan and it's uh, a consistency which more or less stays on my spatula and if I do that as you see it holds the line it doesn't um, it doesn't come back over the where I've just um, just run my finger so that needs a little bit of seasoning now a bit of salt a bit of pepper I use black pepper. I know some people like white pepper with a white sauce, but I just like the taste of black pepper. And I'm just going to add a little bit, a little sprinkle of nutmeg. And let's see how that tastes. touch more salt. It's always best to add a little salt at the beginning and gradually add some more until you're satisfied because if you put too much salt in right at the start then you have no way of recovering from it. That's good. That's off. And there is my bechamel sauce. I shall just pour that into my jug so you can see it. Look at that. No lumps, a few speckles because of the pepper and the nutmeg, but that is a wonderful basic sauce. Now, th this sauce, <laughs> this sauce that we've just made is something you can use just exactly as it is on your lasagna or you can use it in your um, as a basis for all sorts of other sauces. Now the point is that it's a basic technique and if you get this mastered you can do all manner of other things. You have um, the principles of fat that gets hot flour that goes into the fat so that it connects with the heat and is able to cook. You cook the flour and then you add whatever liquid you're going to be using to flavour the sauce and make the basis of it. Then you can add all sorts of other flavourings and I'm going to show you several more in the next couple of videos that I make. So uh, the, the proper uh, quantities and everything else is in the, on the website. I hope you'll go there and have a look and I hope you'll try this sauce and try some of the flavourings that go with it. I'm the Sorceress for sorcerecipes.tv. See you next time.